by the New World Order. Oh, you didn't know? You ready? Let's go! Are you ready? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Big Daddy Cool Vinny Apicella, and you are listening to the most electrifying show in all of sports radio, and that is the Sports Wire. But you know, I gotta say this. <laughs> I was asked earlier this week, first of all, you're listening to Sports Wire on Fat Cat Radio, and um, <laughs> here, on, here on Spreaker, the numerous ways to listen to us, Spreaker.com. Uh, slash show slash sports dash wire uh, facebook dot com slash sports wire ct facebook dot com slash uh, fat cat radio enterprise you can also listen to www.swe dash cd dot com and www.myfatcatradio.com uh, let's see twitter instagram pinterest foursquare periscope tout tumblr it's all swe connecticut and then on skype Google Plus and you YouTube. It is Sportswire S W E. Also on iTunes, you go to the the podcast page. You search Sportswire. Look for our flame logo, and all you gotta do is subscribe. And every time a new Sportswire comes up, it'll be delivered directly to your listening apparatus, and that is uh, your iPhone, iPad, iPod, whatever you have iTunes on, and you can put it on your phone or iPad or uh, uh, MP3 player. And uh, you can even download the Spreaker apps um, and listen to them in the car, listen to them on the go. Of course, it takes data, but whatever. There's millions and millions of ways to listen to the sports wire. And I'm in a good mood today. Uh, first of all, today is Friday, December 18th, 2015. We are just one week removed from Christmas Day. Two weeks removed from the end of 2015. And boy, am I happy to see 2015 end. Um, well, 2015 had a lot of ups and downs for me, personally. And I'll get into them later in this episode. But I, I first... First of all, let's give our let's give our thanks to God. Let, let's, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, Father God, I want to thank you for uh, just giving me this opportunity to talk to the masses, to talk to the people listening, Lord. Um, you are the Most High. You are the greatest. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. Um... You are just absolutely amazing, Father. I thank you for the people that you put in my life. I thank you for being able to talk to Desiree again. I, I thank you for helping me to become the better person and helping me to mature as a disciple and as a, as a man of God. I thank you for just allowing me to see the error of my ways and to work on them and fix them with your help, Father. I, I pray that this show gets, gets a million listens. And I pray that you help me to find sponsors so I can bring more sports wires to uh, the entire ministry. Father, thank you so much for uh, everything you give us. Thank you for this house, the studio, uh, the computer, the electricity, the internet, um, everything that makes this podcast possible. I, I thank you for everything you do on a daily basis. And I ask all this through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Uh, so that was our, uh, I mean, obviously... Our, our opening prayer. Um, I, I'm in a good mood today. It's just one of those days where I'm really thankful for for life, and um, and we've got a couple of comments already. All right. Good morning uh, from the Wayne Management Company. Good morning to you too, sir. Um, but like I said, today is uh, today is a great day. Um, it's one of those days where. Um, I woke up in a good mood. Uh, for those of you that have been listening to the, the Sportswire podcast since April, 
uh, or since May when I first started actually doing new episodes. Um, um, and uh, today's a great day. If you've been listening, you've been listening to just absolutely everything. You know how open I am with everything in my life. You know how I will talk about just absolutely everything on air because you know what? Quite honestly, it's my show, and y'all are listening to me anyway, so you might as well know what's going on in my life. Um, a few weeks ago, well, I mean, if you remember during the summer, I, I had started dating a, a, a fantastic woman named Desiree. Uh, I hurt her, I, and, I, and I was you know, pretty down about it, and, and, and I was pretty open and honest about what had happened, um, you know, and I'll get into that a little more, uh, but I wanted to, there's just so much, so many places my mind wants to go to right now, um, the fir- first off, I wanted to say this one thing, I got offered earlier this week to, uh, start doing a daily podcast here on Fat Cat Radio, and to bring the sports wire daily, as opposed to, you know, twice a week. Uh, trying to set up a uh, uh, a schedule of, you know, normal shows, which would be great. Um, I would love, 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 love to do that. The problem with that is I have a full-time job, uh, you know, so I cannot give you live every single day, especially because, you know, Angela, uh, Angela Russo is coming back um, to Fat Cat Radio. She's going to be taking over the morning uh, I would assume 7 to 10 a.m. in the morning on the East Coast. Um, so she's going to be doing the mornings. Uh, and then, you know, Twism's on the air, and they're bringing in... Uh, they also have another guy, uh, Spaz. I think his name is... I haven't uh, gotten to know him yet. Uh, but here's the deal. I'm going to be starting a new job at some point in January, whether it's January or February. I'm not sure yet. Uh, as it stands now, uh, I don't think I'd be able to do a daily show unless, you know, I was able to record them and tape them earlier. doesn't have necessarily the, the hits as the live, but um, either way, I, I am blessed to be offered that role, uh, and it's a possibility. I also had said that I was going to try to do a New Year's Eve, uh, you know, bridging the gap from 2015 to 2016, do it overnight, uh, you know, from you know 11 to 12.30 or whatever. Unfortunately, those plans have been scrapped because of my job. Um, I do have to work that night overnight, New Year's Eve, which really sucks. Um, but you know what? It's what's best for business, and I'm the only one that can cover it because the other person that uh, could do that job, uh, who is the part-timer who's supposed to go around the full-timer schedule, she wants to dictate her schedule, and it's quite frustrating. So I have to be, it has to be the one to fall back on. So... The only person I'll be kissing at midnight is, well, my hand. Unless, you know, well, anyways. Um, But the fact of the matter is this, okay? The sports wire is growing, and we're growing in numerous places. Um, So, before we get into anything, first off, I want to thank God for the opportunity to be on here, and I did during during prayer. Uh, But, you know what? We're going to get, we got a long, we got a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about, a lot happening WWE-wise. Uh, it is NFL Week 15 this weekend. They kicked off last night with Thursday Night Football. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty with playoff pictures and playoff implications in just about every single game. So we are going to go to our first song. This is our worship song of the day. It's Bizzle. And in this and in, at this time of year, this song is perfect because it makes you remember just what this season is for. Okay, it's not about the material possessions or the material things that you buy for people um, or get or receive from people. It's about God and the thought that goes into it. The song is called God Over Money. So right here, right now, it's Bizzle right here on the Sports Wire. Hello world. Let's go. 
fizzle. Consider me a G O M -er. We the team, Christ be the king forever. They sell greed as need, but we know better. Tell the enemy that he can get an E forever. I know you got bills, dog, but we all got them. And now stop y'all from hitting the mall shopping. So you break the law to get what you can't afford. Cause the latest song says it nothing unless y'all got it. That's what I call bondage, and I'm free from it. I mean, I need money, but I don't need money. Cause understand it when the famine hits and no one to sell they food, then people will see they can't eat money. I am a G O M A, courtesy of G O D. piece of paper that you live and you die for put your soul freedom in your life on the line for but it's time to quit living life in the blindfold they got you ready to murder your brethren for a dollar that it only cost a four cents to print it's evident we need help but the question is will you serve a living god or a dead president See, the value has never been the paper. The value is in the resource that you pay for. Cause if that same resource was made free to you, it'd literally destroy what cash means to you. So how you risk your life for a paper dollar when as long as you have a life, you can make a dollar. But all the money in the world can't make a life. Get your money, but keep God first and make it uh, right. I am a G-O-M -a. Courtesy of G-O-D forever. Curse. Put God at the top and stop putting money first. Putting cash first. Got a bunch of us up in hearse. Leaving us with paper that won't cover up the hurt. Somebody listening now, blinded by the paper. And all this running through their mind is how I'm a hater. The truth is, I ain't rich, but I'm not broke. And I done turned down deals, you the hop on. If the money's really worth something and we print it, then how we in a deficit? Bet you never questioned it. How's $20 worth less than a hundred? Dollars. They the exact same thing with different numbers on them. It's just a tool that they've been using to get control. That's why they put you in a cell if you print your own. But everything, including us, they get the clone. Knock it off, you funny money, and never get us thrown. Uh, I am a G O M A, courtesy of G O D forever. Poke holes in what I'm saying. But after you do that and recognize that what I'm saying is the truth, then the question is what you gonna do about it? What you gonna change, homie? And don't let these cats gas y'all up, man. They on records talking about what they got that you ain't got and what you ain't if you don't have this, homie. I'm telling you, don't let these cats tell you what successful is, dog. Real talk. Just to hold on. He has Not to just John. in this match. He has no choice. This is his career, his livelihood, everything is at stake, and I think we're about to see it end. Oh, and a headbutt oh. by Roman. And Roman has stunned Sheamus. Another right hand. Man. Every resource you have, Roman, you gotta tap into now. Oh, but Reigns hung up on the top rope, and Sheamus, oh, oh. Oh. and he ran into a Superman punch, and Roman Reigns for the championship! Let's go! Mission no. and the referee out of the ring! The chairman just pulled the referee out of the ring! This is... Oh, come on now! Roman Reigns off that headbutt has been busted open! Reigns is busted open. He has Sheamus beat. And Mr. McMahon pulled the official out of the ring. On the Superman punch. A desperate Superman punch. This isn't fair.
fair. It's, it's not fair at all. This man owns the company. Oh, come on, John. You can't even defend those actions. How much more can you oh, stack the Sheamus from against? behind? Sheamus from behind, and now Mr. McMahon forced the official oh. back into the back into the ring. Not like oh, this. Noise. Not like this. Roman Reigns' career is over. No. If you're official John Cohen, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you right. can tell you what you're going to do. You're going to count a little bit faster. You're going to be fired with Roman Reigns. Go back to cooking donuts. What in that? Seamus, why did he just push Reigns out of the ring? No. Oh, my God. Is this why? Now we know why, yeah. Rusev and Del Rio, the League of Nations. Just like last night all over again. And Mr. McMahon still has the official all tied up. Mr. McMahon said there'd be no chance in hell. How much more can you throw at this man? How much more can you throw at Roman Reigns? It won't matter. He's about to be unemployed. Superman punch! Went for the broke! Superman punch! Right, that's right. Yeah, it was an extended clip, and you know what? I don't have the necessary rights to there, but it was courtesy of WWE on YouTube. Check it out. The exact clip, if you missed it, Monday night on WWE Monday Night Raw, Roman Reigns, as you just heard, is your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I couldn't be happier. The era, the, the era of the Roman Empire has started. It's... uh. And it's a very, very good thing too, and and you know the way it started was, I, I as we sh as we talked to you on Monday night, our our, our our Monday morning show, um, as we talked on Monday morning show, uh, Roman Reigns just went crazy at TLC. He attacked Sheamus. He attacked Triple H. He put Triple H through the table. He speared him on the ground. On the ground, um, it, it was amazing. It was just. Awesome. And the fact of the matter is this, okay? The WWE, because of the, I guess, ratings decline over the past few weeks. Now, you can blame some of it on Monday Night Football. But if you notice, during the Attitude Era, during the Monday Night Wars, the amount of people watching combined between WWE and WCW, Raw and Nitro, okay, combined... We're just about the uh, about the same type of ratings that Monday Night Football was getting. Well, at that time, Monday Night Football was was on ABC, which was you know over the air television. It wasn't on cable. Now that's on ESPN. Uh, it, you know they're comparable. So the fact of the matter is, um, you know the ratings have been going down. I think it's because the WWE Universe, all the fans, are getting sick of the PG era. Okay. Because it seems like storylines are uh, being 
uh, rehashed and recycled. And, you know, the writers are getting dull and lazy for the most part. Or either that or, or for what people are saying, Vince is losing touch with reality and losing, you know, the connection with his fan base. However, a, a lot of the PG era, and, and this is a known fact, a lot of the PG era came from when Linda McMahon was running for Senate, you know, for two, in 2010 and then again in 2012. Um, and, you know, so they wanted the programming to be absolutely awesome, no violence towards women from men, no this, no that, nothing ever like the Attitude Era, okay? And of course, Linda still got ridiculed and, 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 and stuff for stuff that happened during the Attitude Era, because the majority of the public are still ignorant to the facts that, you know, the WWE is sports entertainment, or should I say they, they, they ridicule the WWE, they don't consider a, 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 a viable form of entertainment. Now they're starting to move into that that the whole thing where now ESPN has a weekly segment on WWE, which is fantastic because it's starting to really take the WWE more seriously, especially with the the movies that are coming out. A uh, big part of that is The Rock being uh, cast in all these awesome movies, um, and you know Steve Austin making the transition into movies. Uh, so the fact that you have and and let me, let's just be honest. The Rock movies, the movies that The Rock are in, okay, are much better than the movies that Hulk Hogan ever did. Now, Hulk Hogan, obviously, Rocky III, which, you know, he was a supporting role in that. But then, going into No Holds Barred, which I have to say was one of his best movies, No Holds Barred. Um, but then it's like, you know, Santa with Muscles, Mr. Nanny, Suburban Commando. You know, they're all... Um, uh, cult classics, I, I guess you would say. They're they're more of on the... Uh, which, I don't mind cult classics. I mean, hell, my favorite space movie is Spaceballs. You know, so this whole thing with the Star Wars craze... Um, the, the, you know, the whole thing with the Star Wars craze here coming up... I never got into Star Wars. Okay? I, I don't like Star Wars. I think I fell asleep through the first one. I never really cared about any of the other ones. Okay, because it didn't hold my interest. Of course, I was younger when I saw them. Maybe now I'd appreciate them more as an adult, but I just never really got into that. I love Spaceballs because it's more quotable. I mean, when you could go around saying that you're a mog, half man, half dog, and you're your own best friend, I mean, come on! That was John Candy, you know, God rest his soul. Um, you know, and it's like when you're talking about, uh, you know, the Schwartz and, and yogurt. I mean... It's a parody. I love parodies. And, you know, that's that's just the, the, the entirety of it. Um, I prefer the parodies. And it holds my attention more. It, it holds the entertainment value. So throughout this whole Star Wars thing, I, uh, you know, the Sportswire host Facebook uh, account changed all, you know, the cover photo and the, uh, you know, profile picture to Spaceballs stuff. With that being said, <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, Seamus is actually going to be in the new uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that's going to be coming out next year. He plays the character of Rocksteady. Uh, if you remember from the cartoon series of the late 90s, Rocksteady and Bebop were, were two of the mutant. I guess one was a rhinoceros, one was something else. Uh, they were the mutants that were part of the Shredder's team, and Seamus is going to be playing Rocksteady. Um, but... Going back to what I was saying, uh, the WWE is a more viable form of entertainment now, and, uh, you know, th that's the reason why it's just imperative for the WWE to go back to that TV... F now, you, they don't have to necessarily go to TV 14 if they don't want to, but they have to go back to more attitude-driven storylines, okay? Because the Roman Reigns angle that was going on now was very, very similar, starting at Survivor Series, to Daniel Bryan's storyline coming out of SummerSlam in 2013, okay? Now, as of this past Sunday, it's more of the McMahon-Austin storyline that happened in the late 90s that was the catalyst of the Attitude Era. And when you see Roman Reigns just completely demolish, demolishing Triple H, now, I have a problem with something there. 
when you have JBL and Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole on commentary, okay, and you have JBL who's the heel color commentator, okay, and he's talking about how Triple H is fragile and Triple H is, you know, he's the COO of the company and this and that. Look back about five years or more. Triple H was a wrestler. So he took more bumps as a wrestler than Vince McMahon ever took in his entire career. So when you look at the storylines, okay, when you look at the angle and you look at Triple H as being the McMahon character from back in the 90s, okay, Triple H had, you know, had taken bumps. So when he goes through a table, he's done that before. You don't whine and you don't cry about it because he's done it. He, he's been there. He's done that. He's gone through it. Okay, so it's just a matter of kind of, you know, opening up his eyes to get him back in the ring, whatever the case may be. You know, and I'm glad they didn't bring out the stretcher for him. I'm glad, you know, he was helped back by the referees. And then he was speared. You know, so they end TLC with, you know, Triple H hunched over in the fetal position, holding his, his midsection with foam coming out of his mouth. That was great, but to, you know, and I know JBL being the heel commentator, he's, a, he's you know, got to be sticking up for the authority, but then it's also like you always, you know, he's always saying, oh, that's, you know, you don't do that to your boss or whatever. <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. Then on Monday night, as you just heard in the clip, Roman Reigns gave a Superman punch to Vince McMahon and knocked him out. Vince McMahon has not gotten physical. First of all, he hasn't been on Raw in just about a year. Okay? Um, secondly, he hasn't gotten physical in the ring in a long time. And I think that, that was absolutely fantastic what happened at the end of Monday Night Raw. I, I loved the ending. It would have been better had it been on the pay-per-view, but they wanted that last-ditch effort. And I think what happened at the end of TLC was what they needed. Okay? Because... You know, there was, a, there was a meme going around Facebook, and I actually liked it, and I think it was great, because it proves exactly what WWE wanted to do, okay? At the Royal Rumble, which was in Philadelphia back in January of this year, people were booing Roman Reigns after winning the Royal Rumble. Now, honestly, that was simply because so many people wanted that idiot Daniel Bryan to win, okay? They thought that Daniel Bryan's going to go back to the top, whatever, Okay, well, Daniel Bryan, as you can tell, is no longer part of the WWE. He's down in NXT working at the Performance Center. He can't wrestle anymore, okay? And I think WWE kind of had that figured out going in, which is why they weren't going to put a, you know, put a world title on him. And so when Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble last, last uh, or this year, earlier this year, uh, and The Rock came out, they wanted to garner some fan support with The Rock showing his, his cousin, that still didn't work. The Philly fans were booing him to all get out. But then in December of the same year, a complete 180 in Philadelphia, one of the most passionate sports entertainment cities, wrestling cities in the world. You know, you talk about MSG and, and New York being the, the mecca of WWE. You talk about you know, L.A., because they had five Summer Slams in a row, and that being the mecca of, you know, that the West Coast, whatever. Philadelphia, okay? Philadelphia, there's, there's, and there's not a, uh, and it's not a coincidence that Philadelphia was the home to ECW. Because ECW was probably the most impassioned, ha had one of the most impassioned fan bases around. When you look at, when you look at the WWE, now granted the WWE is a big multimedia conglomerate, okay? Would you ever see WWE fans protest and picket and, and petition cable systems to put a WWE pay-per-view on TV? No, you wouldn't. If they had to cancel something for whatever reason, let's say after Owen Hart passed away in the ring in 1999, you know, no cable company ever decided to ever carry a WWE pay-per-view again. Would the fans have gotten behind the WWE at that point to say, put it on? I honestly don't think so. But, you, but ECW had such a passionate fan base, 
Centered in Philadelphia, yes, it went to New York, yes, it went over the world by internet trading. Not even internet, videotape trading at that time, okay? If ECW was around today, if the war happened today, I would, I, I would venture to say that ECW would be on top. And you look at NXT, which in my opinion, with, you know, in, in, with obviously a lot of differences, I think NXT right now is the new ECW. Screw TNA. TNA is out of the water. Okay, they're moving to their third channel or fourth channel because they started on Fox Sports Net on I on pay per view only. Then they went to Spike TV. Spike TV got sick of them because the ratings were going down. They went to Destination America, which could never be found on any kind of TV station. Maybe half the country. Okay, so the ratings were were decent there, but now they're on Pop, which is in even less cable markets. I've never even heard of the Pop Network. So, TNA is nothing. Jeff Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling, it's a, it's a matter to which we see how it is, but, you know, Ring of Honor is great, but nothing will ever compare to the WWE. And with NXT, they're basically cornered the market. And, you know, I was listening to, uh, whose podcast was it? I, I forget. I was listening to a podcast, the WWE uh, Wrestlers podcast, whether it was Steve Austin or Jim Ross, I can't under, I can't remember. It was quite a while ago, actually. And basically, the WWE has cornered the market on on, on on wrestling. NXT, even though it's now doing world tours and everything, NXT is their basic indie promotion. Okay, it's better written. Okay, it's better wrestling. It's not geared necessarily towards advertisers. Okay, because it's on either Hulu or the WWE Network, and all they air are WWE branded commercials. Okay, um, so, and then you have obviously the WWE itself. Uh, so, usually what would happen is like SummerSlam weekend or WrestleMania weekend or a weekend that uh, there would be a pay per view, a local indie wrestling group would bring in some old timers and have a you know, have a, have have a, an event. They can't do that anymore. Because now you're having NXT run the night before WrestleMania. Or the night before SummerSlam. Or, or at some other point that, you know, that week. You're having NXT do that. That corners the market. Look at this past summer in August. Okay, WWE was in Bridgeport the Friday before SummerSlam. NXT had their event in Brooklyn on Saturday at the same place, okay, the, the Barclays Center on Saturday, which drew awesome members on the WWE Network. Then you had SummerSlam on Sunday at the Barclays Center, and then you had Raw on Monday from the Barclays Center. They sold out all three nights. And for NXT to sell out the Barclays Center, that's amazing. The WWE product now is getting to the point where it needs to be. Okay, so many people are ridiculing it. That spark that the TLC made. Now, I, I was very upset with the Wyatts defeating, you know, the, the Team ECW in Philly. But you know what? It had to happen. The Wyatts needed to go over, kind of passing the torch. But it would have been great if Paul Heyman came out as the manager of Team ECW. Okay, do you, could, you, could you imagine... Could you imagine the promos going back and forth between Bray Wyatt and Paul Heyman? Oh, they would have been magical. Bray Wyatt is, you know, the Wyatt family is the new Ministry of Darkness, so to speak. Okay? But it's done to the point where it's so much better. And the reason why I say that is because guys came up. Into the ministry of dark, into the uh, Wyatt family, it wasn't just taking older guys and throwing them in black mascara and black lipstick and calling them a different name. Okay, it was, uh, you know, the ministry of darkness took guys like Midian and Mabel, who became Viscera. Uh, you know, the acolytes, the, and not that the acolytes were old, but Ron Simmons had already had his career in WCW. Bradshaw was nearing the end of his career. Okay, and then you had the Brood, which helped kickstart Edge and Christian, but Gangrel was towards the end of his career. Okay, um, you know, so you had the older aging guys, 
with the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan came up together as the faction. And then, yeah, they broke up for a little while, but they eventually flocked back. And then Braun Strowman coming up. There is nobody, 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 nobody that could take down Braun Strowman. Because I was talking to a buddy of mine at work who watches wrestling. We were trying to figure out, before Rhino was introduced as the fourth member of Team, e Team ECW, we were trying to figure out who of the ECW originals would best match Braun Strowman. Okay? We were talking about maybe Big Dick Dugley. Well, he passed away. 911, he passed away. There's really nobody. Unless you want to bring in uh, Big Show because he was part of the WWE ECW brand. But, again, there's who do you have to take down Braun Strowman? Nobody that I know of. Boy, we're, ta we're, we're hot today. <laughs> we are. We are hot today. Because it's Friday the 18th. We're, we're a week away from Christmas. And WWE is getting better. The prayers, the, 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 the Christmas wishes, the prayers have been answered. And Vince is finally starting to listen. I honestly think he should, should hand, you know, the entire day-to-day -day operations over to Triple H. Including the writing. You know, obviously, you know, the, the writers at NXT and Triple H are doing a phenomenal job with NXT. You know, I think it's time for Vince to step back. I, that's a, that's my opinion. Um, it's time for him to step back because of the simple fact. Excuse me again. He's losing touch with 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 reality. He's losing touch with with his audience. You know, he wants to kind of. Back in the '80s, it was okay. Okay, back in the '80s, it was okay to say, "Oh, you know what? You're going to like this guy." Not now. Now with the advent of social media, I mean, hell, how many times? <laughs> I mean, look at the Royal Rumble. The fans wanted to hijack the Rumble and have them make it, change it midway to have Daniel Bryan win the Rumble. So, that's that's what it is. You know? But anyways, we're going to get to our next song. Um, Alright? And this is going to be a classic by uh, those three little rodents, the chipmunks. Here's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right here on the Sports Wire. Now look, fellas, I've been walking around the North Pole with you for two days, and I'm cold and tired, and, well, where's the surprise you brought me here to see? Around the next corner! There he is! Hello! Rudolph! Hello! Rudolph! Hello! Who's Rudolph, boys? I'm going to see if I can find myself a nice, warm igloo. Try to get along without me, if you possibly can, because I have to get along. And 
and those those adorable little rodents, the chipmunks, live here right here on the Sports Wire. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Um, I'm telling you, it's it's great. It, I am in a fired up mood today, as you can tell by the first couple segments, and um, I, I have to say it. It's it's simply for a lot of different reasons. First of all, I'm alive. <laughs> That's the first thing. I mean, I'm alive. I'm not. I'm not dead. I'm not in a mental institution. I'm not in prison. I'm here. I'm able to talk to you, and uh, you know, it, it's just a great thing. I'm not on the streets. I have a roof over my head, and if you have that kind of stuff. And if you have love, you're rich, okay? That's all there is to it. You don't need to have a lot of money to be rich because you can still be miserable. And miserable people are never good people to be around. So, that being said, th- before I get to the NFL, okay, I'm going to kind of do a little bit different. Normally, I get this, I do the sports, and then I talk about, you know, uh, then I talk about whatever. But, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of a sandwich this time. And I'm going to be, I'm going to talk about something, you know, Back, back, obviously in the in the um, summer, and I, I've been completely open with a lot of stuff, a, a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, here on the show, and on the Sports Wire, because of the simple fact that you know what, there's no reason to hide anything. Um, but the, here's the, here's the simple truth to the matter, okay? Back this past summer, I was in a relationship, and I shared that. I I did the the, the relationship ended. Um, because I, I did hit, hurt Desiree, you know, uh, the, the reasons behind that and what, it, what exactly happened, um, I had been talking now at this point, I was still working overnights and, you know, I was getting fed up. I, I mean, pissed off, fed up. I, I couldn't stand it anymore that I was working overnights because quite honestly, okay, I, I just, you know, Desiree and I were spending a lot of time together. Okay. We were hanging out at her house, watch, cuddling on the couch, watching movies, TV, whatever. It was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But then she went to bed. I had to leave to go to work. You know, and then it's like when she was working, I was sleeping in the morning. Um, anyways, when uh, what happened was I'm the kind of I'm a people person working overnight, third shift at a hotel. Now, I'm not saying that this is an excuse. I'm saying you, you have very, very, very minimal interaction with people. So, you know, it's like I u- utilize Facebook Messenger, utilize texting and chat, you know, just to pass the time, you know. It's like you can only watch so much Netflix, so much Hulu, so much WWE Network before it's like, you know, you realize, huh, it's only been four hours. Gosh, good gosh. Um, but... The fact is, what happened was one night I had um, sent a message to another female um, who happened to be, who I thought was a mutual friend, but apparently just sometimes guys can be kind of dense and thick-headed and not understand things. Um, I didn't really look deeper into the subtext of how she was talking to me. So when she had you know, messaged me, and this is this is the other woman now, not Desiree, okay, she had messaged me saying, oh, I had a long day with the kids, I'm sore, my feet are sore, whatever the case was, and, you know, I ended up sending a message saying, oh, well, you know, Desiree likes, uh, you know, my massages, maybe I should give you one too, or maybe you should have, you know, yeah, maybe I should give you one too, um, you know, and, and I had simply asked her, you know, what about your boyfriend, you know, how, you know, how is that relationship going? It's a complete different topic, but because of the, <laughs> the, because of the, uh, closeness of the questions, it was, you know, misconstrued. Um, but that's, again, it's not an excuse. The reason why I say this is because one of the things that I like about being in talk, talk radio, uh, you know, sports radio, talk radio, whatever you want to call it, okay, um, I mean, I have this vehicle to talk to, you know, to share my experiences with others so that maybe you won't make the same mistakes I did. <laughs> um, and here's the deal, okay? I, I was dealing with a lot of insecurities 
and 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 faults and everything, you know. And I and I have actually shared these with Desiree since we've been talking again, um, because quite honestly, I, I I honestly feel like she deserves to know the truth. I am blessed and I am thankful that she actually responded to my message. I wasn't expecting to uh, her to. I wasn't expecting to ever talk to her again. But then I stepped out on faith. And I said, you know what? Let me just see if she'll talk to me again. And she, you know, we've been talking and, and just kind of just talking. Uh, and that's all it's at at this point is talk. Um, you know, and we both kind of buried the hatchet, so to speak. You know, we both said we still love each other. And, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see where it goes. Um... But the, the 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 fact remains is that I truly believe that God is gonna obviously God is his will is gonna be done. Okay? Everything is gonna is gonna be done. Um according to God's will. And I feel that I, I, I honestly feel that he's going to help me with my insecurities. Now, a lot of my insecurity, insecurities always come from experiences or stuff that's learned. When you're a baby, you're a blank slate. It all depends on your environment and your upbringing. Depend, you know, and there are some things you're genetically predisposed to. I'm not going to discount science. But most of the things in your life you learn. If you're ridiculed at school, you're bullied... Your, you know, your parents never think you're good enough. You're going to have some serious insecurities. No, not to mention if you're molested, if you're raped, if you're, you know, uh, you know, uh, severely, whether it be emotionally, physically, or mentally abused, you're going to have some serious problems. Um, I know for me, a lot of my insecurities came out because I, I, I felt that even though we were in love and, and, and we were talking about, you know, down the road, moving in together and getting married, I always felt like I, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough to be able to support her, support my son, support her daughter, have a family. And all this stuff kind of just kept, was, was kept bottled inside of me. And first of all, that's the wrong thing to do. Um, secondly, you know, it, it's one of those things where I really felt like I wasn't good enough for her. You know, we would have amazing talks, amazing intimate moments, but yet I felt, oh, you know what, I, I, I'm still working in hospitality. I'm only making so much money, uh, you know, a week. Then you take off child support. How am I supposed to afford to, to, to provide for this family? Now she works too, and, you know, but and living in Connecticut is quite expensive. Um, but I, I just always felt like there was this, this glass ceiling that I just couldn't get past. No matter how much I wanted, I wanted to get married, no matter how much I wanted to move on with my life and, and have a family, I felt there was a, this ceiling above me. And, and it's hard when you're trying and when you're trying to move on with your life and you're trying to get to where you want to go. Now, granted, you have to keep God at the forefront. <laughs> um, here's the deal, okay? I didn't keep God at the forefront, okay? I lost track of giving thanks. I lost track of seeking knowledge from him above how to treat Desiree as his daughter and how to treat her. Now, she's not a Christian like I, you know, like I am. You know, and, and she does believe in God, but she doesn't, you know, there's differences in, in, in that. But it's still on me to treat her the best way I could. And I didn't do that. And unfortunately, a lot of that had to do with my insecurities of not feeling good enough. Of feeling like, you know what, I'm going to screw this up anyways. Or we're going to get to the point of living together and just never get to that next step. Or we're, we're, we're going to get to that point where um, I'm going to make a serious screw-up. 
and you know, a lot of, like I said, guys can be dumb, guys can be naive, thick-headed, whatever. You know, so it's like, when I made that comment, I didn't think about it to the point of, oh, well, you know, I, I shouldn't be even saying something like this because it could be misconstrued or, or whatever. Sometimes, if you think something can be misinterpreted or even if, if you're in a relationship, I'm not going to say that, that cut off contact with every other person of the opposite sex, but be careful and have boundaries. Have boundaries of what you talk about, what you don't talk about. Because, you know what? One of those times where you think it's just an innocent conversation with a friend, okay, could turn really quickly into something inappropriate and something you shouldn't be talking about. Um, now, I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to, you know, talk about in the Bible that, you know, you shouldn't be uh, sexting or whatever all that so obviously sexting wasn't around back in the Bible times. But inappropriate even still, like saying something like, I've been thinking about you. Well, if you're in a relationship, you should be thinking about the woman you're in a relationship all the time. Unless, unless your friend is going through something like a loss in the family, you know, or, or some big uh, uh, catastrophe and saying, you know, how are you feeling? Or I was just thinking this, I, I want to check in on you or something like that. And, and choose your words wisely. <laughs> Um, I've learned that the hard way. Um, the fact of the matter is this, okay? I, I, I want to help people out there to understand that we all make mistakes. We're all human. We all have our flaws and faults. There is no perfect human being on this earth. The only perfect human being was Jesus Christ, and that's because he was half God, and even he was not was was not susceptible, or, or, to, or if even he was susceptible susceptible to death. And even though he rose again in three days, um, the fact is, us we can't rise again. Once we're dead, we're dead. <laughs> End of discussion. Okay. My advice is to love deeply. And if you're in a relationship, okay, love that person with your entire heart. Don't ever go astray. Don't ever think about saying something that, that would uh, infer that you're going to put your hands on another female uh, romantically or, or whatever. Um, so, or on another person of the opposite sex, I should say. Um, so that's, that's where we go from there. Um, you know, and, and there, there's also anxieties that come up, whether you're just really scared of the future, really scared of, of, of having to retire in 30 years and not having money to set aside, uh, anxi anxious about, you know, your kids' colleges, college tuition, and, you know, all that kind of stuff weighs on you. And if you don't have people that you could talk to, and I'm not talking about a psychiatrist or psychologist or a counselor, I'm talking about friends, real friends. If you don't have a support system of real friends watching your back, you've got nothing. Because you're just, because number one, if you get into an argument with your, with your significant other, that's all you have to talk to if you don't have friends. You need to have a good mixture of friends, and good friends are looking out for your well-being and the best thing for you. If you have friends that will engage in, you know, dirty conversations with you, even though you have, even though you're in a relationship, those are not the best friends to have. Especially if they're from the opposite sex. That's just my opinion, okay? <laughs> That's just my opinion. So, take that for what it's worth, but I know all about insecurities. Been there, done that, you know. I'm working through them, and I can only pray that you guys, whoever's out there that's listening here, that do have insecurities, okay, I pray that you do overcome them, and you do get work done on them, and try to work it out before it gets too late. So we're going to get to our next song, alright, um, this is going to be one of my favorite Christmas songs, we're actually going to play two, two songs in a row, I'll, I'll announce the other one afterwards, but uh, right now, here's Christmas in East Haven by the Guido Rocker, right here on the Sports Wire. City 
busy sidewalks, busy sidewalks. Girls with hair out today. They got trees on the poles in East Haven. What are you talking about? Guys named Vinny got the skinny on what suits they should wear. Hey, it's a money. And above all the Camaros, you hear silver bells. All those smells. It's eternity. It's Christmas time in East Haven. to tell so she talks on the phone to Gina Bobby's cheek he needs a beat cause he stole Louie's girl and above all the cursing you hear silver bells hair all gel it's Christmas time my Peugeot, okay? Hey! Soon it will be Christmas Day. You know what I mean? Mikey's booking, Mom is cooking, Christmas Eve with the fish, as we're all getting ready for dinner. Christmas shopping, the place is hopping, trying to find one more gift, and the bug all the bustle you hear silver bells silver bells it's Christmas time in East Haven I'm a family man you understand soon it will be Christmas day
and that was Every Year at Christmas Time by Jean Marie Rivera right here on the Sportswire. And you know what? It's, it's uh, one of the best songs I've ever heard uh, when it comes to uh, Christmas songs. It's, a, it's an original um, brought to you, obviously, by Jean Marie Rivera. Um, she was actually the sister-in-law of the sister of a girl that I dated back years ago. I've had that CD for like 15 years. And she messaged me and she's like, I just thought you tagged me something that, you know, of an old song. It was like 50 years ago. And I explained to her who I was and, and you know, very cool. Um, oh. Arrest made after bullets hit Meriden Mosque. Federal authorities have made an arrest after bullets hit a Meriden Mosque last month. Uh, that's Meriden, Connecticut. That's the same town that I work in. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a mosque in, in Meriden, but... Apparently there is. Um, that's something that I'm not going to touch today because we still got to go over the NFL. Um, go to week. We're we're in week 15. Started with a bang last night. The St. Louis Rams and what it could possibly be the very last NFL game in uh, St. Louis as the Rams are slated to move to Los Angeles next season. Um, the Rams defeated the Buccaneers 31 to 23 in. Uh, I have to say it was a pretty sloppy game. <laughs> um, the Rams actually were up at one point 31 to, I believe, 13. And then, uh, you know, the Buccaneers obviously scored 10 unanswered points. But they just couldn't make it clo close enough. Now, I have a gripe with our fantasy scorers. Okay, the St. Louis Rams got negative 2 points last night for, you know, giving up 13 points. But they also had an interception and a fumble recovery. That should give them something. <laughs> uh, but for giving up 23 points and negative, it doesn't sit right with me. It really doesn't. So I'm now projected to lose because of that. And, and I'm in the consolation ladder now because I lost first round game. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's go with, let's, uh, let's run over, give the rundown of the games for this week. The 4 o'clock four o'clock game on Sunday, 425 game, Denver at Pittsburgh. Um it's going to be a tough one for Pittsburgh to win. Denver's Brock Osweiler is is on point, and he's really filled in for Peyton Manning to the point where I think this, Peyton Manning's going to end up retiring after this year uh, because Broncos are going to want to go with somebody younger. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the New Jersey Jets travel to Dallas at the, for the Sunday night game uh, at 8 o'clock on uh, NBC and Football Night in America. That's a do-or-die game for Dallas. They have, that's a must win for Dallas. For for the Jets, they're currently on the bubble. They're in the wild card run right now. So, there's a possibility of that. Hap that's going to have some major playoff implications. Carolina Panthers travel up north to the New Jersey Giants at MetLife Stadium. Panthers, I look for this one to go 15-0. and um, uh, Excuse me, 14-0. and the Chicago Bears go into Minnesota to take on arch rivals the Vikings at one, at one o'clock. Atlanta Falcon, uh, yeah, the Atlanta Falcons take go down to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars at one o'clock. Houston goes into Indianapolis to take on the Andrew Luckless Colts at one o'clock. Now Andrew Luck has been practicing, even though he's got a lacerated kidney, so he might not, he might not start. But you might be eligible. Tennessee Titans come up to uh, New England to take on the Patriots at 1 o'clock. That'll be a wash for the Patriots. Definitely confidence builder. The Baltimore Ravens host the Kansas City Chiefs at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Oh, wait a minute. My apologies, folks. Tomorrow night, Saturday, is the Dallas and the Jets. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, the 19th at 8 o'clock. Or 8.30, Dallas and the Jets. I forgot they're starting Saturday games now. Um, I just had a look at the date. Uh, the Washington Redskins, the, hap the, 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 the hapless Washington Redskins, are uh, hosting the Buffalo Bills at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Seattle Seahawks host the Cleveland Browns at 4 o'clock on Sunday. The Oakland Raiders host the Green Bay Packers. One o'clock, uh, four o'clock on Sunday. San Diego Chargers hosting the Miami Dolphins at four twenty-five on Sunday. The Cincinnati Bengals travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers at four twenty-five on Sunday. 
the Arizona Cardinals go into Philly to take on the Philadelphia Falcon. Uh, excuse me, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, at 8.30 on Sunday. They're the Sunday night game, uh, football night in America on NBC. That's that game. And then Monday night football this week, another lackluster game. The New Orleans Saints hosting the Detroit Lions Monday night on Monday night football. Hopefully that'll be a Monday night where Raw can get some more ratings. That's always a good thing because uh, Royal Rumble starts the road to WrestleMania, and that's in a few weeks. Um, so that's what that is. Um, in terms of how I feel the playoff pictures, the, the playoff, the, excuse me, the playoff pictures are going. Okay, right now, if the season were to end today in the AFC, the wild card games would be Denver and the Jets, Denver hosting the Jets and the Indianapolis Colts hosting the Chiefs. New England clinched the first round by. And uh, they would play the winner of Indianapolis and Kansas City or if the Jets won. And then Cincinnati would host uh, Denver automatically if they win or the winner of Indianapolis versus Kansas City. So basically, you know, football is always about reseeding, which I really can't stand because it's confusing. And that's in the uh, AFC. Uh, and then in the hunt still, Pittsburgh Steelers, Oakland Raiders, Buffalo Bills, Houston, Texans, and then Jacksonville, Miami, Baltimore, San Diego, Cleveland, and Tennessee. The fact that they're, you know, still in the hunt at 3-10 and 10 is quite uh, amusing. In the, in the NFC, oh, okay, completely threw me out. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, NFL Mobile quit unexpectedly, so let's get let me get back into where I was. And the NFC playoff picture stands as this. Oh, here we go. Haha. <laughs> Carolina obviously clinched a first round bye. Arizona uh, right now would have a first round bye as well. Current current wild card games: Grand, Green Bay hosts hosting Minnesota. And Washington hosting Seattle. And then uh, Carolina would host if Miami if they won. Or the winner of Washington versus Seattle. Arizona would host Green Bay if they won. Or the winner of the Washington versus Seattle game. Very, again, very confusing. And in, still in the hunt, the Atlanta Falcons, Philadelphia Eagles, New Jersey Giants, the uh, St. Louis Rams. And they're all under 500. They're still in the hunt. That's crazy. All right. So that's your NFL report for today. Um, big news, upsetting news. Uh, Pete Rose, again, his, his appeal has been denied. He still will not be reinstated into baseball. And it's unfortunate. Rob Manford said that he still gambles on baseball. He hasn't learned a lesson. First of all, okay, the man is the all-time hits leader. Okay. He got banned from baseball for betting on baseball while he was playing. Okay, I understand that. Now it's some 30 years removed from his, or 20 years removed from his career. I think that he has a right, if he wants to gamble, let him gamble. He could easily talk to younger guys about the mistakes he's made. But last I knew, gambling wasn't illegal. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that all works out. But again, Pete Rose denied... Um, a uh, reinstatement into baseball. However, he they also said that that shouldn't matter when it comes to the Hall of Fame. But in his in their right mind, well, in their right minds, I would I would hope they would vote Pete Rosen. But who would, you know, vote Pete Rosen? <laughs> Honestly, nobody, uh, because of you know, it's by the writers or the Veterans Committee, and I don't think many people would want to vote Pete Rosen. Because of the stigma attached to it. That's a load of garbage. Alright, we're going to get to our last song for the day. Um, this one is a novelty Christmas song. It's by Brad Paisley. It's called Santa Looked a Lot Like Daddy. So, right here on the Sports Wire. <laughs> Come down 
thought that I was fast asleep in They thought that I was tucked in bed They never thought I'd come a peep in Or that I'd hear what was said well, Santa put his arm around mama And mama put her arm around him So if Santa Claus ain't daddy Then I'm I gonna tell on them Well, Santa looked a lot like daddy But daddy looked a lot like him not the way I had it in picture Santa wasn't much too thin He didn't come down the chimney So mama must have let him in well, Santa looked a lot like daddy but Daddy looked a lot like me All right, that's right. Thank you, Baby Doll, from the Sports Guru Show. That's right. This is the Sports Wire, and this is the most electrifying show in all of sports radio, the Sports Wire. But, you know, we we actually go a lot further than just sports radio here. We talk about lifestyle choices. We talk about religion. We talk about politics. We talk about, well, it doesn't matter what we talk about here on the Sports Wire because the fact is you guys hear it. <laughs> that's all that matters, right? Okay, um, so we are in our last segment of the show, and you know what that means. That means we're going to get to our dumb laws of the day. And that's right, the dumb laws of the day, courtesy of dumblaws.com. Today we're going to go to Missouri for Missouri's dumb laws. So, here we go. It is illegal to have oral sex. That seems to be in every single freaking state. Of course, how do they <laughs> control it? Um, single men between the ages of 21 and 50 must pay an annual tax of $1. It was enacted in 1820. So, <laughs> you have to pay a tax on your age. That's crazy. So that's, you know, 39 
or tw excuse me, twenty nine dollars in taxes over your lifetime, <laughs> just for your age. And then it is illegal to speed. Well, we all know that. In city laws in Missouri. In Buckner, in this small town of only 4,000, yard waste may be burned any day except Sunday. Okay. In Columbia, Missouri, you cannot have an antenna exposed outside of your house. Yet you can have a 25-foot satellite dish. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, though clotheslines are banned... Clothes may be draped over a fence. Okay, this must be the ghetto of of Missouri. Um, one may not drink in a bar between two and six a.m. Well, okay, last call would be about one thirty ish. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. In Kansas City, Missouri, minors are not allowed to purchase cap pistols. However, they may buy shotguns freely. Really? Oh, good God. Um, installation of bathtubs with four legs resembling animal paws is prohibited. Okay. And Marceline, miners can buy rolling paper and tobacco, but not lighters. Give me a break. In Marquette, it is illegal for more than four unrelated persons to occupy the same dwelling, called the brothel law. Really? That means our house that I live in would be illegal. In Marquette. In Mole, frightening a baby is in violation of the law. <laughs> okay. In Natchez, Natchez, uh, it shall be unlawful to provide beer or other intoxicants to elephants. Where did they come up with this stuff? In Purdy, dancing is strictly prohibited. Okay. In St. Louis, it is illegal to sit on the curb of any city street and drink beer from a bucket. Now that's redneck. From a bucket. A milkman may not run while on duty. Okay, in University City, four women may not rent an apartment together. No person may own a PVC pipe. No person may have a yard sale in their front yard. Okay, so you have a tag sale. Morons. <laughs> oh, good grief. Um, all right, more city laws in University City. Houses may not have lights on them that shine into the window of a neighbor's house. Okay, it makes sense. It is illegal to request for someone to watch over your parked car. Okay. One may not honk another's horn. <laughs> Again, how do you control that? So somebody sitting in the pasture seat, burp, burp. Oh, I didn't do it. It was him and the rest of them. Really? Either that or you're sitting in a stoplight. Guy get inside and go around and honk the other guy's horn. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. Okay, so those are the dumb laws right here in Missouri. Um, just absolutely crazy craziness. I want to thank you all for listening for today. It's been a great show. It really is. Um, you know, I, I have to say this. I, I was looking on Facebook early before the show started, and I saw, you know, one of those um, math problems, okay? It was 40 plus 40 times 0 plus 1. That's what it was, okay? And now, order of operations. Please excuse my dairy and Sally. Parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay? Those are the only rules. Okay? And the, the answer was 41. Because you multiply 40 times 0, you get 0. 40 plus 0 plus 1 is 41. That's the answer. So I comment the answer, and I put 41. And some idiot before me post uh, commented... It depends on the rules that you follow. It could be either answer, either 1 or 41. All right, so obviously this person went to a school under Obamacare, under this frequent flyer program or whatever it's called. Okay, because nobody that I know of, <laughs> nobody that I know of, would ever do any math any other ways. I mean, obviously they had to be uh, versed in mathematics uh, and and understand math. But you know that 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 there's only one math is a constant. It's always going to be the same. I mean, unless there's variables. But again, you know, when it comes to just numbers, math is a constant. It is the most constant of all sciences in the world. 
Because you can't say, oh, well, if this equals this and this equals... No. 2 plus 2 will always be 4. 2 plus 2 will never be 5. Okay? 2 plus 2 will never be Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I, I quoted... You know, I, I, I did that. I went back to the rock. Okay? You know, 2 times 5 will always be 10. And that's all there is to it. So, when you get somebody saying it depends on the rules... They're a moron. Okay? Math is math is math. It's always the same if you smell what the rock is cooking. No, honestly, it, it is. Math is always going to be the same. You can't find... Where do you get 40 plus 40? <laughs> uh, yeah, because it was either 1 or 41. That's right, and the answer was 41. So, where do you get 1 from? Well, 40 plus 40 is 80 times 0... If you just go right to left, or left to right, yeah, it, it would equal 1, because you, 40 plus 40 is 80, times 0 is, is 80, or is 0, plus 1 is 1. No, you always do the, um, you know, multiplication division before it is just dragged all the time, no matter what, no matter who you are. All right, folks, that's about it for the time for today. This is, uh, you know, this is Sportswire, and thank you for listening. Um, I will see you next week. It's going to be a hectic week next week, but uh, it's going to be fun. It really will be. All right, folks, have a great day. We will see you Monday on the Sportswire. Have a good day, everybody.